Hello, you're on time for New Vision TV News. I am Ruth Naseje. Now, as a constitutional democracy, Uganda observes the separation of powers between the executive, the judiciary, and the legislature, and each branch has had its challenges. However, the pressures the Speaker of Parliament operates under can be unbearably enormous. New Vision TV brings you some of the challenges the speakers in independent Uganda have faced as Uganda looks forward to celebrate 55 years of independence. After the transition, Speaker John Bowes Griffin served for half a year after independence. Narendra Patel took over the stewardship of Uganda's first parliament in May 1963 and remained in charge up to the end of the end of the second parliament in 1971 when the military took over. Patel's term saw the worst use of brutal force by the executive, including the military overthrow of the constitution in 1966, the subsequent forceful enactment of the pigeonhole constitution by MPs who did not know its contents. The 1969 abolition of political parties, except the ruling UPC and the parliament finally died in his hands when it was abolished outright by the army in 1971. The third parliament called National Consultative Council ran from 1979 after the fall of the military regime to 1980 and was chaired by Professor Edward Rugumayo. The 30-member NCC overthrew President Yusuf Ulayan is told President Binaisa. Professor Gumaya's legislature was then rendered irrelevant by the military commission of Paolo Mwanga, which overthrew Binaisa mid-1980. The fourth parliament from December 1980 to July 1985 with two parties, the ruling UPC and the opposition DP led by Paolo Simugere was chaired by Francis Butajira. He had to deal with walkouts staged by Paolo Simogere's side, especially when the president, who was also finance minister Milton Obote, was reading the budget. The fifth parliament that sat from 1986 to 1996 was also chaired by Moses Chigongo, the vice chairman of the NRM, on behalf of his chairman, President Yori Museveni. It is the fifth parliament that extended NRM rule beyond 1989 to 1996, created the constituent assembly that debated and passed the 1995 constitution and also started the official affirmative action that guarantees women a third of the legislative seats. The sixth parliament coming under the new constitution was chaired by James Wapa Kabulo. It was the strongest and fiercest so far. It censured two ministers, Jim Wesi and Sam Kutesa. The sixth parliament also forced another two Chirunda Chivejinja and Matthew Ruchikide to resign when censure proceedings against them started. This parliament sat between 1996 and 2001. The seventh parliament, chaired by Edward Sekandi, sat from 2001 to 2006 and removed presidential term limits from the constitution, enabling Yorim Museveni to keep standing until he attained the age of 75. Sekandi also presided over the uneventful eighth parliament that sat from 2006 to 2011. The ninth parliament that sat from 2011 to 2016 presided over by Rebecca Kadaga, first woman to head the August House. She has possibly been the most powerful speaker in Uganda's history. She defied the ruling party to which she belongs when they expelled four MPs from the party, but she insisted that they keep their seats in parliament. She thus created another side in parliament, the bench for other shades of opinion, which were different from independence for them. Kadaga also allowed debate on the oil agreements against the express will of the executive. Rebecca Kadag also chairs the 10th parliament, which started in 2016 and is expected to continue until 2021. It is currently handling the proposal to amend the constitution and remove the 75-year age limit on standing for presidency, which led to a two-hour physical fight between opposition MPs and security forces inside the chamber of parliament. And in our sports news, Congolese striker Clovis Mbai Monsa has been cleared by the doctors to feature for Viper Sports Club in their next games in the Azam Uganda Premier League. Monsa has been sidelined with a hamstring injury for more than a month and his return will help to boost their striking force. In his absence, he missed league games against Bright Stars, Bull FC, SC Villa, and new entrants, Masavu FC. Meanwhile, Halid Raliwa is on the verge of returning to the team after showing signs of recovery from a knee injury. 
The center defender is currently working on his ball work and running drills. Ralua sustained an injury on his right knee during the Uganda Cranes through one win over Chitara in the regional tour a few months back. Vipers were currently top of the table in the league with 10 points from four games will play police away at Mandela National Stadium in Nambole on October 14th in their next game. You're still watching New Vision TV and in our daily Pearl of Africa series, we take a look at the zebras in Uganda. Now, these animals are found in almost every national park in Uganda. The zebras are known for their white and black striped coats. But did you know that zebras can move nearly 3,000 meters looking for food? Here's a report. Zebras are single hoofed animals that are native to Africa. They're very closely related to horses and donkeys. In the same genus, Equus, the most prominent feature of zebras is the bold patterns on their coats. What most people do not know is that zebras have a black skin and their white coats. Each species of zebra has a different general pattern of stripes. Though they all live in Africa, each species of zebra has its own home area. Plain zebras live in the treeless grasslands and woodlands of eastern and southern Africa. The gravy zebras live in the arid grasslands of Ethiopia and northern Kenya. The mountain zebra is found in South Africa, Namibia and Angola. Zebras eat mostly grass and will travel up to 1,800 miles or nearly 3,000 kilometers from the base in search of food. Some zebras also eat leaves and twigs. When you are in Uganda, you can find these animals at the Uganda Wildlife Education Center, Kidepo Valley National Park, Queen Elizabeth National Park, and other wildlife hubs. And that's all we had for you. Thank you for watching. Be sure to catch more of your news updates on your mobile phone, on your desktop, on your tablet, and anywhere on the go by visiting our website www.newvision.co.ug. I am Ruth Naseje.